Hey there, mama. So you've heard of the Enneagram. You may or may not be obsessed. I know, me too. Let's learn how to apply our Enneagram personalities to not only understand ourselves, but understand our relationships, including our kids. We can streamline our systems, our households, our businesses. We can live an easier, more simplified life simply by applying the principles in this personality test. I bet all these hacks are things you've not even considered. In this podcast, I'll be talking about family routines, self-identity, making life easier, and really learning how to cherish who God created you to be from the inside out. How to prioritize, plan, and create systems that's going to make life feel seamless. I'm Becky Williams, and this is Mama Meets Enneagram Podcast. I'm super excited about today's topic because it's combining the Enneagram and eating together. These are two things that I absolutely love to talk about. Have you ever noticed that whenever people try different diets, um, one's going to lose a lot of weight and then the other one doesn't lose any, or sometimes they even gain weight. You ever wondered why that is? I definitely know that I have, and I've gotten this question over and over and over. So today I wanted to give you a little insight into why that might be. I'd love to give you some ideas so you can tap into yourself and your desire to lose weight, not just eating less, but understanding that underlying programming has told your body to desperately hold on to each pound despite your conscious efforts to release them. Understanding why some lose weight and some don't is understanding your Enneagram type. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? (laughs) The Enneagram is a way to come up with a deeper understanding about yourself and about others. Your Enneagram personality type will provide a unique path to shed light on what is not serving you and realize what is actually eating at you. Gaining understanding of your relationship to food according to your Enneagram personality type will allow you a greater awareness of what lies beneath those eating habits and how to make better dietary choices as well as support your body physically and emotionally. All right, so when you get on Amazon or you get on Google and you search for diet books or diet programs, you get hundreds of thousands of pages. There are definitely not a shortage of programs and pills and all kinds of things like that to be able to lose weight. But the question is, why are we not all at our healthy ideal weight? I truly believe that the reason lies in our personalities and how we approach health in general. We are, in a sense, killing ourselves with food because we're unable to stop eating the wrong foods for our bodies. Don't get me wrong. There are definitely valid reasons for weight gain, such as hormone imbalances, slow metabolism, and stress. But the bottom line is that we're clearly eating too many of the wrong foods. But why is it that some foods will bring balance to one person's body but not the other? Well, if you look at the different diet books and you hold them up against the idea of the Enneagram, you realize that each diet was written by somebody with a personality for someone with the same personality. For example, if you are a type 1 personality and the diet is written for you, then you're most likely to be successful as a type 1 personality than another Enneagram number with the same diet. So the bottom line is that people will gain weight for different reasons. By picking up a diet book off the shelf or taking diet pills, you're essentially just scratching the surface of your issue. This is why I see 90% of people who go on a diet are going to regain that weight back within the first year. And I know that's really frustrating. Another fact is that whenever they lose the weight, it is mostly muscle. But when they gain it back, it is mostly fat. And that is why we are repeatedly going on diets, getting off diets, and that's a really frustrating place to be. I do want to remind you that the next couple episodes that I talk about are not going to be giving you specifics like ditch chocolate or eat only sprouted grains or whatever, okay? But it's about examining yourself, your emotional self. Even if it's not fun to face these unpleasant sides of us, it is very important to help us understand on a more conscious level to help give insight to our inner bodies, our inner conscious workings of our mind. Don't worry if you feel defensive at first. Whenever I start talking about your Enneagram number, if you're feeling that pushback, that's okay, that's normal. Whenever I first read the information about a type 3, I was like, no, that is not me. That No, I don't do that. But... Going back and reading it, I am able to identify with a lot of the different things in it. So 
If you do feel a little bit of resistance, just finish listening to the episode, come back another day, listen again whenever you have had time to digest the information. I really think that you will be able to find this helpful. I also want to remind you that although everyone has one primary type, we're going to see ourselves in all of the other types too. So I want you to listen to every episode and apply the information that you hear, even if I'm not talking about your specific number or your specific group of numbers. I think that one of the biggest pushbacks or one of the biggest issues or resistance with the Enneagram is that people don't want to be labeled or put in a box. I know I definitely don't want to either. So I want to explain that I actually think learning the Enneagram and understanding yourself will help you to be out of the box that you're already in. We've created boxes with our limiting beliefs, with our fears, with our fixations about ourselves that are not true. Things that are not in alignment with God's word and we have taken them on as identities. I think that the Enneagram actually will help you to fall in love again with yourself. Understand why you do the things that you do. Use it as that roadmap like I talked about in episode one and as a GPS to be able to get you from where you are right now to where you would like to be. Doing the inner work is going to help you. It's going to help you to grow and become more conscious in those areas of health. It is also not uncommon to be mistyped. I just want you to know that. This is another reason I need you to listen to all of the episodes. You will find one of these numbers will resonate with you the most. So even if you think you have an idea of what your number is, listen to all the episodes on all the numbers. It will help you to narrow that down even further. Although I'm not going to go over all the basics of the Enneagram in this episode, I do want to talk about different levels of mental and emotional health. As each personality type becomes more stressed, they become less emotionally healthy. That's just the same overall. That's just human nature. There's also a chance that the physical health of that person is going to be affected. We all know stress is the precursor to a lot of illnesses. I've also found out that the less healthy you are, the worse you will eat or the less quality foods that you eat because your programming says that you don't deserve to do better or to have better. This is why the Enneagram has three different levels for every single number. You have healthy, average, and unhealthy. I'm going to discuss all of these different aspects in another episode. But the Enneagram is very complex, and it is definitely not my intention to explain all of that today. For the next couple episodes, I want to talk about the approach to eating and understanding your relationship to food, to food choices, entertaining, diet, and exercise. While we are mostly one type, we can show aspects of certain other types within the Enneagram framework. So as a result, you may see aspects of your approach of eating in more than one type, and that is perfectly normal. While we won't change our main types during our lifetime, it is normal to move up and down between that healthy and average and unhealthy state as your life unfolds and different events just happen. So whether you find yourself as a self-righteous sinner number one, the moody muncher number four, or the discerning diner number seven, the following episodes will benefit you in taking a peek into how you approach health. I cannot wait to dive into this intriguing topic. Let's go. This was an episode of the Mama Meets Enneagram podcast. Did you know that you don't have to be on social media to keep up with what's happening? I promise to keep you in the loop through my weekly emails of any upcoming podcast episodes, helpful downloads, and the latest tips to keep your life running smoothly. Check the show notes for the most recent freebie. Until next time, keep thriving in your motherhood.